Our second panelist is uh, Stan Hinkemann, the Executive Director of the Institute for Justice and Reconciliation. Stan. Thank you very much, Dion. <clears throat> Good morning to all of you. Uh, so I'm going to reflect on one point that the Chief Justice made during his talk, and two points um, in the question and answer session, because I think uh, you know the question and answer session um, was quite rich. Um, so let me, let me start with the first one um, that he said during his talk. He made the point <clears throat> that we need to find solutions together. And then he uh, followed that up by saying, we are all to blame. Um, now obviously one would want to unpack that, what, what, he, mean, me, what he meant. But I think when, when, when I reflect on this finding the solutions together, um, you know, I'm quite encouraged by something I witnessed last week. I was at... Um, what I believe was a historical land summit last week in Bala Bala. Um, <clears throat> and the, uh, ch the chair, president, head of, the, of Agri SA, Dan Creel, came up and made what I believe was a remarkable statement. And he said something to the effect of, we are gathering within a particular context against a particular background. We are gathering against the background of colonialism. We are gathering against the background of the 1913 Land Act. We are gathering against the background of apartheid. And just that acknowledgement was critical for the audience and particularly for the segment of society that, that he represents. And similarly, I think, you know, that that level of acknowledgement and honesty is, 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 is important for every single part of the society. Um, the Archbishop or the Chief Justice spoke about the fact that we need to do brutal self-introspection. Um, now, I, I, you know, one could have just said introspection, but I, I, I believe that you may having said self-introspection just makes it so much more important. So that's the first point. The second point, <clears throat> um, and that was the first question actually, it was around, the question around how can we deal with people who abuse the generosity of this kind of talk? Um, and I think he answered it quite well. Um, and, and it reminded me of the reality of that question. Um, you know, in, uh, after 1994, every South African wanted to embrace Mandela because he was the great reconciler. You know, he said the right things. He, you know, he focused on reconciliation. And nobody, or very few people, were prepared to then say, so this reconciliation that he's preaching, and by implication restitution, what did it cost him to get to that point where he can say that? What did it cost him? Amongst other things, it cost him 27 years in prison. But none of us, or most of us, did not ask the question, what will it cost me? He sacrificed freedom, he sacrificed family. What is it that I need to sacrifice? And 10 years, in fact, less than 10 years later, when Archbishop Tutu called for a 1% wealth tax, he was almost crucified. And I think that's something that we as South Africans must interrogate. This issue of, that's why I said it's a, it was a pertinent question. Abusing the, or taking advantage of the generosity of talks like, like this morning. And then I want to just say something on what he said about the land issue, which is kind of the hot topic. 
Um, and I, I want to make the point that in a bizarre kind of way, there has been some kind of land restitution. And I say bizarre deliberately. Because since 1994, the highest percentage of millionaires in South Africa came from property development. Property development. And so the restitution went the wrong way because we know who are the property developers by and large. Um, and I think there's something to be said, not just about land in general, but also about what's going on at the moment around property, around um, the whole thing that we're seeing around us, um, gentrification, where people are forced to move out of traditional areas again. And then I want to, to close, because I got my sign from Marlon, with a quote that is, at the moment, probably one of my favorite quotes. And it, John Scar said the following. The future is not some place we are going to, but one we are creating. The paths to it are not found, but made. And the process of making them changes both the maker and the destination. And if we want to, to have a restituted South Africa, a restored South Africa, we'll have to make that path. It's not there. We have to make it. Thank you very much.